Hey! 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 Let's talk about modules. So, ES 2015 has modules in them, long anticipated, but we've seen modules in Node for, uh, well, since Node has begun, which is which we're called CommonJS. So, how are modules different? And there are a lot of talks lately about how Node is having difficulty. Uh, importing CommonJS modules. So let's take a quick overview. Uh, CommonJS, you've got a you've got a module that exports. It's just another variable. You can export any object on it, and you've got a require function. You give it a path, and you get the object you exported. That's pretty much it. Uh, you have an object. Require it gets an object. Done. Modules, very similar. You have an export. Uh, keyword and an import. Uh, what and they actually do is, I find it easiest to think about, they deal with variable bindings. So export exposes a variable binding and import takes it out. Uh, we'll see how that's different in a short while. And it can do that because it's part of the language. It's not a library like CommonJS, so it can do very voodoo things. I think the easiest way to think of the difference between the two is that ES modules are static and common JS modules are dynamic. And you can see how that's different in several things. First of all, when can we do these things? When can I import things from another modules? In ES, it's only top, top level. I can't import inside an if statement. I can't export inside a function, and vice versa. You have to do it at the top level. That's because when the node, when, when the, sorry, the JavaScript engine tries to parse your file, and it sees, hey, that's a module, it tries to, it, it, it has to know which, what it imports and exports at parse time. So if you have if statements, it can't know whether that if statement will, be, will execute. If you have a function, maybe an error is thrown before it. So you have to do it at the top level. N require and you know common JS modules are just that's an object, <coughs> exports as an object, requires a function, just do whatever. There's also a problem with uh, time of with uh, time of call and time of use. So we import something or require something, when can we use it? So import sort of behaves like uh, functions or var, where uh, the variable is hoisted to the top of the block. So I can actually use a variable I import before actually importing it, which is weird. But again, it makes sense because imports are parsed at, runtime, at parse time. Sorry. And requires you know, just another function call. So I can use it before I actually call the function, which makes sense. Now. Another thing is that, again, import is a syntax, it's a keyword. So the right-hand side of import has to be a string literal. It can't be a number, it can't be assignment, it can't be a function call, it can't be a template string, it can't be six. It has to be a string literal. Requires, you know, just the function, you can check if the Large Hadron Collider destroyed the world yet, and then, I don't know, destroy the world if it hasn't. And the most important thing, and I think the key difference, is that, as said, import uh, receives a variable binding and export exposes one. So if I have here a module, it exports a variable, and here I receive it, and we have another function which increments this pseudo global variable. When I import foo and the increment foo, I check the value of foo, it's four and at the beginning, I increase foo over here, and it's the same variable. It's the same. It's the same uh, variable binding. So they change it both. In common JS, it's a bit weird because module that exports is an object, and you can assign it to anything. Um, if I just, you know, assign it to an object literal, and foo has a value of four, foo will ha will have the value of four. So if I increase the variable four. This won't change. You know, it will still still be an object with a foo key and a value of four. But if I actually go to module exports the object and change values inside it, it will change, which makes sense. 
And so you work with module exports as you work with another object, which is oftentimes weird. So, short conclusion. Uh, I don't think one of them is better than the other. They're, they do similar, they try to achieve a similar goal, but they have very different philosophies. Said CommonJS is dynamic and he's static, which if you're ever ha having trouble thinking, how can I do this with imports? I find that simple to think about. And, uh, okay, so browser support, which is the important thing. You can do, you can use them, of course, with uh, Babel if you have a system loader and all of those fancy things roll up. But in actual browsers, it's in Safari table. So the four people who use Safari can use it right now. <laughs> it's an Edge 15, so the seven people who use Edge have to turn on the flag. It's in Firefox. 54 uh, and above, again behind the flag, and Chrome 60, which is currently Chrome Canary? Canary. It's also behind the flag, an experimental uh, JavaScript uh, one finger or another. So in other words, it's pretty much soon-ish. In a year or so, we can all just use modules whenever and however. Okay, so I want to get into goofy random things. So questions before I get into goofy random things. Yes? So, question is, if browsers are going to support native modules, but not, you know, common JS, and how can you have isomorphic uh, programs? So, browsers never supported common JS, really. It was a library. So, if you wanted common JS to work in the browser, you had to transpile it, or use a library like require, or whichever. So, if you wanted to work in both server and, you either use imports, or you uh, transpile again. Other question? Goofy random things? Cool. Uh, yes, question. Why in the first place? Require word just fine. Why in the first place? So, okay, and let's so say... Less capable than require. So why in the first place when modules are worse than require or less capable? So let's say you want to... Uh, they're, better, they're better in the sense that they're static. If if he, if you uh, they're okay again it's different I I don't want to say better they're different the way that they're static so if you say want to import from a TypeScript file you can do that with modules it'll be a bit difficult to require additionally you wanna you wanna say uh, okay I'm gonna require a file and then I'm gonna know what's in it I'm gonna know what it exports with require you don't know since it's just an object with Modules, you can. So it's just useful for tooling. Yes. It's useful. It's very useful for tooling. It's very useful for static analysis. It's very useful for uh, tools like TypeScript or others. It's a more static approach to uh, to module handling. Also, if you use HTTP to server, then you can, uh, you know, in the future, you, you're going to be able to load up, uh, the server is going to analyze the, the whole dependency tree and, and load up without you needing to contaminate all the sources. A uh, comment by the crowd is that, yeah, with HTTP2, you can just push a lot of things uh, before the they were actually requested. So if you can statically analyze your dependencies, you can do it. So one of the biggest things with the difference is that uh, require is in time uh, synchronous execution, um, whereas uh, import is not. Um, you would block the entire draw thread as you would load all of the assets. So that's one of the biggest reasons why you have the synchronous, uh, the asynchronous deterministic tree building first. <laughs> Let good discussions later. Yeah. Uh, one question. Sorry. How does it handle circular dependencies? Great question. That's actually. That's actually one of the things it does great. Since you can uh, determine at parse time which dependencies are required, it can know, oh, you want to load that dependency? I'll just hang on for a minute and load that. And it just sort of works. Unlike required, which, again, you don't know what it needs. OK, so do I have, uh, oh, do I have a minute? One funny thing. OK, one funny thing. Um, <laughs> 
One, just one funny thing. Okay, okay. Let's do this funny thing. Uh, ignore the first block. <laughs> Uh, l look at the second block. So you have uh, something called export uh, asterisk, which exports everything from another module. I ask you a question. You export something, a module, which you export everything from a module which exports a variable named foo. You export everything from another module which also exports foo. You import foo. Which what one? happens? <laughs> you can pity the foo. <laughs> I ask of you, how are you importing? If you import specifically foo, then the language says you suck and throws a syntax error at your face because it can't determine which foo. However, if you import everything, then it's not an error and you just don't get foo. Have fun! <laughs> Pam 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 p